Ponsby Pond, lying just west of the High Peaks Wilderness in New York's Adirondack Park, was made famous by the 1858 Philosopher's Camp. Fallensby is a microcosm of the Adirondack Park's six million acres and its many landscape communities. The pond at Fallensby is not only beautiful, it is isolated and should be part of the High Peaks Wilderness. We begin our flight around the 14,600 acre Fallensby property, starting on the north end, where Fallensby Pond's outlet joins the Racket River, and head south over the outlet plain toward Fallensby Pond. When the Racket River is unusually high in springtime, flood water can flow up this plain to Fallensby Pond, becoming a temporary inlet instead of an outlet. There is only a thin layer of peat under this outlet plain, and the surface is covered by vegetation typical of a fen. The uncommon beauty of fall colors are found here in the Adirondacks during late September and early October. The pond is quite shallow near the dam, showing the sediment deposited here when flow on the Fallensby Outlet Plain reverses due to the high water on the Racket River. The north end of the pond hooks to the west into a large bay, while the main pond is oriented north-south. The western shore slopes up to a high ridge separating Fallensby from properties to the west. This western ridge line and a single long access road crossing the Racket River over a limited capacity bridge makes Fallensby Pond remote and inaccessible. The ridge line is covered mostly in beech, maple, and basswood with small areas of spruce and fir. A point on the east shoreline was the location of an Adirondack Great Camp removed by the Nature Conservancy. Heading south over the pond, we are passing the shoreline point where remains of the Great Camp were removed. Just to the south, we are approaching the bay where the 1858 Philosopher's Camp was located. Members of this famous encampment included Ralph Waldo Emerson, Louis Agassiz, William James Stillman, and the younger brother of Oliver Wendell Holmes, among others. This encampment is widely thought to be the beginning of environmental conservation. They arrived here after a long trip from Boston, traveling by train, stagecoach, wagon, boat, and finally canoe, taking more than three days for the journey. Because of the tall white pine shoreline trees and the remote character of Fallensby Pond, New York State chose the southern portion of Fallensby to raise the first set of bald eagles in New York State after imposing the ban on DDT. A wetland sits astride a southern inlet to Fallensby Pond. As we fly further south, we see dark green hemlock and spruce lining the stream as it collects runoff from the western ridge lines of the Fallensby property. Further south, we see clear cuts on the hillside to the right where extensive hardwood logging preceded the transfer of ownership to the Nature Conservancy. Terrain depressions with extraordinary wetlands signal our approach to Moose Creek in the south. Along the south property line, we again see evidence of older heavy logging south of Moose Creek, right up to Fallensby's southern boundary. Moose Creek meanders from west to east before joining the Racket River toward the High Peaks Wilderness. After joining the Racket River, which forms Fallensby's eastern and northern boundary, we travel north over the Racket River Falls and further north for several miles before the river turns west toward the Fallensby Outlet Plain where we began this aerial tour. This section of the Racket River flows between Long Lake and Tupper Lake 
and is considered to be the largest and most significant free-flowing river and floodplain wetland system in New York State. The Racket River's watershed is quite large, almost one-third of the Adirondack Park, extending east into the High Peaks and south to Racket Lake, covering an area nearly the size of Yellowstone National Park. The Racket River's watershed includes major Adirondack lakes like Racket Lake, Blue Mountain Lake, Long Lake, and Tupper Lake. After leaving Tupper Lake, the Racket River meanders northward and ultimately joins the St. Lawrence River on the Canadian border. Water volumes on the Racket are large and fluctuate many feet throughout the seasons. Spring water levels can be so high that the meanders we see here are totally inundated and the channel can appear as a straight line. Water level fluctuation is both a constructive and a destructive force within the floodplain. River levee deposits are built up when the water levels rise and spill out onto the floodplain. When water velocity slows, sediments form the long ridge-like levees paralleling the main river channel. Reaching the northeast corner of the Fallensby property, the Racket River turns west and we change video clips to show colors typical for late summer when the silver maples are just beginning to darken and change color. Flying over this river as it meanders in its floodplain, we see multiple parallel levees formed over the last 12,000 years since the glaciers retreated. Behind the levees are shallow water areas inundated in spring by high water levels in the main channel. These low-lying backwater sloughs are often disconnected from the river during summer's low water. These sloughs can be dominated by herbaceous emergent vegetation such as sedges, rushes, and grasses, or by woody shrubs such as speckled alder, holly, willows, and dogwoods. The sloughs are highly productive wetlands, especially important for ducks and other waterfowl, as well as nursery areas for fish. Completing our circular tour of the 14,600-acre Fallensby Pond property, we return to the outlet plain where we began and where Fallensby Pond's outlet joins the Racket River. Taking a closer look at Fallensby's outlet, we see a shallow dam and a road crossing the outlet plain, providing access to the eastern portion of the property. The dam is only a couple of feet high, and during very high water on the Racket River, water reverses and flows into the pond here, depositing sediments and creating shallows and a beach. At the north end of the outlet plain, Fallensby's outlet stream flows through an old dam before joining the slow-moving and flat Racket River. West of the outlet plain is a forested bog and fen complex that is quite interesting. The fen portions are easily identified from the air by looking for the lighter colored Atlantic white cedar, growing in more nutrient-rich soils with greater moisture from active water. The bog portions are under the darker larch, also called tamarack, and black spruce trees seen at the far end, which receive most or all of their moisture from rain and snow. East of the ridgeline dividing the Fallensby property north-south lies a sloping landscape down to the Racket River, whose steep tributaries have hosted beaver over the centuries. These small streams have been dammed by beavers repeatedly. Beavers abandon a dam site and move on to another when the carrying distance for saplings becomes too long. Once the aspen and beech maple forest recovers, over perhaps a decade or more, beavers return and the sequence starts all over again. Because these streams are steep, 
Beaver dams are more plentiful and we find them every few feet of vertical drop where topography is favorable for a dam. We call them beaver dam chains when several or more dams are close together on the same stream. Some of these ponds have an abandoned beaver lodge in ponds where the dams are no longer maintained by beavers who have moved on. The Racket River seen here is one of the largest intact, undeveloped river floodplains in New York State. The complex mix of features such as meanders, levees, backwater sloughs, and oxbows at this scale is remarkable. The occurrence of silver maple in large numbers at such a high elevation is also unique. Trees occupying levee crests and the wetlands upland transition zone around backwater sloughs are dominated by silver maple. This species is well adapted for life in the floodplain where it can withstand long periods of inundation and swift currents. Oxbow ponds are embedded in the floodplain and occur when a river meander is cut off from the main channel and isolated by a river levee. These ponds are typically flooded during high water events and regain isolation when water levels recede. And finally, we again view Fallensby Pond from on high, over where we started, over the Racket River.